This is the first in a series of vid videos on solving quadratic equations uh, with by finding the square root when the problems are fairly simple problems and we call them squared fisher problems. So this is part one and there's you can watch the follow-up videos as well. So the first thing is let's see what we mean when we mean squared fisher problems. Well it's just a term that I use to stand for solving quadratic equations by finding the square root. And what it is, is there are problems where um, b is equal to zero. If you think about a quadratic equation being ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, whenever b is equal to zero, in other words, where there's a no x term, when there's an x squared and no x term. So here are three of the type problems that we're talking about. In this problem right here, we have an x squared term, but we have no x term. In this one, we actually have two x squared terms, but still there's no x term, and the same thing here, we have an x squared term, but no x. So all three of these problems are relatively simple problems that we can solve by simply finding the square root. The problems that we're not talking about are harder problems that like the following, 2x squared plus 4x plus 3, here there's an x squared and an x term, so those are going to be follow, uh, covered in the following video. So let's look at a sample problem. You can use this uh, terminology if you want to or not, it doesn't matter. So the very first problem we're going to look at is this one here. It's three, solve 3x three squared plus 51 is equal to 30. So first let's think about if, whether or not this is a squared fisher problem. There's an x squared term, but no x term. And when we have that, then there's only two steps. And the two steps is number one, to isolate x squared. And step two, take the square root. And what you're going to remember is don't forget your plus or minus. Whenever you take the square root of both sides, you always remember your, your plus or minus. So the first thing we're going to do to take this problem right here is you have 3x squared plus 51 is equal to 30. I'm going to subtract 51 from both sides. So I have 3x squared is equal to minus 21. Then I'm going to divide by 3. So I get x squared is equal to minus 7. And now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of minus 7. So I'm going to pause there just for a second to think about this. I have x squared is equal to plus or minus negative 7. And there's actually two different things I can do now. I could just say there's no real solution. Right? And in fact, there is no real solution here. Or the second thing is I can use the imaginary unit i, where i is equal to minus 1. And then the really question is, what does it say? Does it say solve for all solutions or solve for only real solutions? And it's really a matter of context. In this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue going on. So I'm going to simplify square root of negative 7. So negative 7, I'm going to break that up into a minus 1 and a 7. I'm going to keep my plus or minus. Square root of minus 1 is i, so my final answer is plus i, plus or minus i squared of 7. So those are, that's my answer right there. Let's look at another example. This one is solve 8x squared plus 10x is equal to 6x squared minus 30. So let's see if in fact this is a squared footer problem or not. It's a squared fisher problem if there's an x squared but no x term. Here you have two x squared terms but no x term, so it is. So I'm going to simply solve this by first isolating the x squared. So I'm going to get the x squared. Let's get them over here on the left. So you subtract 6x squared and subtract 6x squared. And I have 2x squared plus 10 is equal to minus 30. Then I want to get the 10 over on that side, so I'm going to subtract 10 and subtract 10. So I get 2x squared is equal to minus 40. And I'm going to divide by 2. x squared is equal to minus 20. So I'm not done now. I'm just going to come over here and solve the rest of it. So I have x squared is equal to minus 20. So that's the first step. Anytime you have a squared footer problem, the first step is going to be you're going to isolate the x squared term. And then the second step is you're going to simplify, I mean, you're going to take the square root of both sides. So you get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of minus 20. 
At this point, you know already that there's no real solution, so you're going to solve for the imaginary or complex solution, the imaginary solutions. So when you have a square root of minus 20, you're going to break that up into minus 1 and 20. And the minus 1 becomes an i, so it's i squared of 20. Don't forget your plus or minuses. And now you're going to simplify square root of 20. Square root of 20 is going to be 4 and 5. Remember, you need to find two numbers that multiply to 20. One is a perfect square and one is uh, some other number. So that's going to be square root of 4, square root of 5 times i. Square root of 4 is 2, so that's 2i square root of 5. And, you, and again, don't forget your plus or minus, and that's going to be your final answer right there. So what's interesting here is, is if you stopped right here and said NRS for no real solution, that's not incorrect. So oftentimes uh, you neither need to know that you are interested in complex solutions or it might set, say it specifically to solve for complex solutions. So here you have two answers. They're both imaginary. Why is there two answers? There's two answers because of the plus and minus and they're both imaginary because of the i. Let's look at one more problem. So here we have 5x squared minus 10 is equal to 3x squared plus 2. This one might say solve for all complex solutions. If it says solve for all complex solutions, that means you're interested in both um, real solutions and imaginary solutions. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to notice that there's an x squared term but no x term. So you know this is going to be a Squibb-Futzer problem. What you're going to do here is you're going to isolate the x squared. So you're going to subtract 3x squared and subtract 3x squared. 2x squared minus 10 is equal to 2. And I'm going to add 10 to both sides. 2x squared is equal to 14. I'm going to divide by 2. I get x squared is equal to 7. Now something interesting here. Even though we're studying imaginary numbers here, and that, that's what this video is, this problem right here has real solutions. Uh, and that's, that's the way this is going to be. When you're starting off a problem, you won't know whether the solutions are real or imaginary until you're done. Here what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we get x is equal to the square root of 7. I'm going to never forget my plus or minus. I'm going to try to simplify square root of 7. I can't. This is my answer right here. And that's how you solve um, quadratic equations by finding the square root with i.